Hey, Sahar Galt here, and let's talk about the Westworld score. It's a clever feat of instrumentation, uniting the violin, this pentatonic fragment conjuring a fiddler wailing a somber folk tune. The piano mimics like the player piano in the saloon, and the acoustic guitar, probably the instrument most strongly connected with the Old West, in an ensemble with synths ever whirring behind this Western veneer. The instrumental palette itself embodies Westworld. And more than that, the piano is the metaphorical analog of the hosts. At the beginning, it mimicked the introduced theme. Now, it plays in lockstep, then finally descends into chromatic spiral of its own devising. The ensuing panic sends the ostinato into tachycardia, advancing the rhythm forward. The future is here, and sooner than anticipated. The melody returns, iterating through partial sequence, inversion, intervallic change, and it's reharmonized. In the E7 flat 9 to B flat, there's the tritone root motion, sounding literal alarm. And we think we've reached the apotheosis of technological invention. But we've actually lost control. Okay, now that we have the view from above, let's zoom in to the technical details. This is ostensibly a piece in A minor, a key when played by the piano. It requires only the white keys. Yet another way, the introduction of chromaticism is significant. It expands the melody into the black keys. Much has been made of the choice between white and black in Westworld, like hat selection upon entering the park, and the parallels to black hat and white hat, and hacking can't be missed. And it's important to notice the interplay between the violin and the piano. Violin teaches a pentatonic fragment. The piano mimics a subtle variation. Violin teaches the fragment again. And only in its second attempt, the piano, our instrumental placeholder for AI, initiates our first foray outside of the white keys. Poking outside of A minor, pushing at the boundaries. It happens simultaneously with the flat two chord, shifting the tonal landscape toward the Phrygian mode. It's also worth noticing that were we in C, this B flat chord is flat seven, which is often used in scores as a harmonic signifier of the Old West or the frontier, especially in what's been called cowboy chromaticism, moving from flat seven to five or B flat to G. Here it happens in reverse, five to flat seven. And of course, we're not actually in C, which resolves to A minor, but the gesture is close enough that it gives us the vague impression of a Western, especially given the instrumental context, and distinct enough that it doesn't sound like a pastiche. Now, as the melody continues to expand and develop in subsequent sections, we can see the almost algorithmic approach to melodic variation. For example, we can plainly see the relationship between these two melodies. This is a partial sequence. This portion of the melody is just shifted down by step. It's done modally, which means all the notes stay within the key, but the quality of intervals will change based on where they land in relationship to the scale. This portion of the melody is a minor second, but when shifted down, becomes a major second, because that's the distance between these scale degrees within the key. Now, you can see the sequence is not done completely. This inscrutable deviation from a perfect sequence certainly grates against our human desire for symmetry and simple answers, but we can console ourselves by thinking of it as sequence plus intervallic change. The next 
iteration of the melody takes the shifted sequence and inverts the second half. Inversion is flipping a melody across an axis. You can see this portion of the melody has simply been flipped in the other direction. This too has been adjusted. Typically, inversion involves moving the same interval distance in the opposite direction. But we can see the leap in the original melody is a fourth down. In the inverted melody, it's only a third up. But the resemblance of the shape is unmistakable and that the melodies both land on the same note makes the relationship quite clear. And now this new variation of the melody also gets the sequence treatment. Moving back up a step. And the final variation, the climax, is a variation on this variation. You can see it's pure sequence on this chunk. And in this part, an inversion, sequence, and rhythmic expansion. Now, I will say the specific details of the execution here are somewhat arbitrary, but the concept that's being communicated isn't. The development of this melody as a series of operations and modifications to those operations, which are resultingly fed back into the operations again, bears a striking likeness to recursion and the violin demonstrating what you might call training data. And as the piano mimics, it becomes increasingly more adept with each iteration. Wow, well, it's very much like we get to hear machine learning. Okay, that's all for now. Any questions? Comment below. Thanks for watching. I'm Sahar Gault. I'll see you next time.